Thanks everybody. Dave Roberts now available. First question is from Alana Rizzo. Go ahead, Alana. Dave, how much was the fact that there is a three batter minimum in addition to the fact that a lot of your left-handers can get both left and right guys out leading to the um, subtraction of Adam Kolarik when you had to trim the rosters? Hello. Sorry, Alana, we're having some technical difficulties. Dave, you got me? Hey, Alana. Hey, there we go. Sorry about that, Skip. I apologize. Um, no, it's, it's probably Juan's fault. <laughs> um, how much of the fact that so many of your left-handers in your bullpen can get lefties and righties out kind of led to the fact that you had to uh, option choleric when roster is trimmed? Yeah, um, uh, that certainly played a, a big part. Um you know, Adam is a guy that has pitched really big innings, got big outs for us, especially in the postseason last year. And to make that decision was very difficult. Um, you know, I, I think that, you know, he, he's been good for us up to this point. Uh, we've been – we've challenged him on, on getting more right-handers this year. And I think early on we were trying to get his arm up to get the right-handers and then down below to get the lefties. And um, it, it – little bit affected his uh, c uh, command from down below. So I think that going to SC, now we're going to try to get him to stay down below versus left versus right and have him have a more consistent throw and um, hopefully get him back here soon. Um, but we certainly see his value and love everything about him. But right now, having the guys that do get both has given us a, a little bit of runway. Does the trimming of the roster to 28 um, adversely affect you in any way, other than not being able, to obviously, to have that extra arm or Zach McKinstry coming off the bench? Um, no. You know, obviously, it, it certainly doesn't allow for as many options. But I, I do think that getting it down to 28 gives us more semblance of, of the strategy, uh, the baseball sense, as far as not having uh, endless means or, or players at your disposal. Um, so I love our 28, but, you, you know, you see guys that unfortunately are the casualties where, you know, Adam was one of them right now. So hopefully we'll get him back. And speaking of getting him back, how nice is it to have Mookie back in that lineup offensively, not just defensively? It's great. And I think that we did a nice job, you know, with Mookie as far as making sure we're confident to get him back out there so he doesn't uh, regress as far as the injury. Uh, training staff has done a fantastic job getting him back to health and Mookie obviously is a very good patient and eager to get back so yeah to get him back in the lineup and not just as a defense replacement certainly makes us better. Uh, one more for me Dave with Edwin Rios there at third base for the start today um, as I sit here right now he was just taking more reps at third base ground balls how, how have you seen him defensively improve particularly at the hot corner? <clears throat> I, I see um, you know, number one, his body has transformed. Um, he's done a great job of really leaning out, and he's still maintaining his strength. The footwork, much more agile. The lateral movement, uh, the hand, the glove work has considerably uh, improved. A couple grades for me. Um, the ball just stays in the glove, and uh, the forehand, backhand, and lastly, the arm strength and accuracy. All that has improved. So I think that, and I've said it before is I think you know you look back from spring training the first one we had to now he, he's probably the most overall improved player uh, we have and um, you know I, I'm really proud of Eddie okay thank you for your time yep next question from Eric Steven go ahead Eric hi Dave um, you, you guys had um, Donovan Solano as an NRI a couple years ago and he was in the minors um, 
what have you seen from him? Uh, the, like, he hit really well with the Giants last year. Obviously, he's up to a great start. Uh, what have you seen from him so far this year? Well, I think, uh, Eric, um, I really enjoyed our time with, with Donovan. And, and uh, from the break last year, I think I read somewhere that he has the most hits or has the highest average from last All-Star break to, to now. And, you know, he's a baseball player. He's a guy that loves to play the game. Um, I remember being in front of him, being in front of our guys in spring training and just talked about gratitude and how grateful he was to be in a big league camp. And so he was a guy that just needed an opportunity um, and he'll play anywhere. He can catch the baseball. He watches baseball. He studies it. Uh, he's a tough out, use the whole field. And, you know, those guys are, those guys might not be carriers for a ball club, but they're certainly a nice addition. And right now, He's certainly doing a lot of good things for that giant club. Thanks. Go ahead, Jorge. Uh, Dave, just with Mookie, um, what gave you guys the confidence that he can go out there and swing a bat and play a game about nine innings over the last couple of days? What changed? Um, just just uh, Wednesday, him his work in Wednesday, swinging the bat in the cage. Um, yesterday getting treatment and um, going back and forth with Neil Ramp and just getting the confidence that he woke up today feeling feeling really good. So I think that those kind of factors led to the decision to get him going tonight. And just you mentioned Rios being super improved and getting him to start at third base. Have you guys decided that you guys may, need to make a concerted effort to give him starts and more at-bats? Um, yeah, and that's because, you know, he's earned them. Um, you know, to allow for Max to stay on the right side of the diamond, um, to, you know, add Eddie to the mix, to give JT a DH day is huge. Um, I, I know that Max will do it, has no problem doing it, but I think that that consistency to stay on the right side of the diamond is important. But again, it just speaks to the improvement that Edwin has made to allow for us to make these decisions. And then Jock back in the leadoff spot, you mentioned the other day, it's because Richards throws a lot of off-speed curveball breaking balls. It's just more Samarja is a fastball-heavy kind of guy. Yeah, and, and it's, it's more of, you know, obviously, you know, Max hasn't been seeing the baseball well, so you give him a different look. Uh, Jock is hit in the leadoff spot many times over, so he's comfortable there. Uh, I love the matchup. And, and, yeah, you know, Jock has always been very good against right-handed pitching, regardless. So, um you know, I just felt that this is a good spot to get them three cracks at Samarja. Thank you. I have a question from Ken Gurnick. Go ahead, Ken. Dave, you, you dropped Muncie down in the lineup. What, what are you seeing with him? Uh, he had one or two brief spells kind of similar to this in the past, but he's come out of it pretty quick. This time it doesn't look like it. What are you, what are you seeing? Um, you know, I, I think uh, – well, number one, I, I like the way he's still taking walks, and uh, there's still some slug in there. Um, I think that, you know, when Max, you know, goes right center to left center, um, he's a considerably better hitter. Um, I, I think he's getting a heavy dose in the start in Arizona of the breaking balls and, uh, you know, releasing the barrel, putting it on the ground. So I think that he's working real hard. He'll get through it, but, um, you know, like I told Jorge, it's just a, a sense of giving him a different look, letting the game come to him a little bit. And, um, you know, I expect guys to be on base tonight and expect them to come through. Thanks. We got one final question from J.B. Monster. Go ahead, J.B. Hey, Dave. Uh, in the context of um, lineup decisions, roster decisions, you know, technically this is game 13. Uh, but in the 162-game season, it would be more like game 35 or so. And I'm wondering, like, where your thought is as a manager. Are you managing this as if it were game 35? Or is it still, like, just game 13 of another season for you? Um, I would say if you put in that context, game 35. Um, you know, you still – understand that it's a shorter season and, and you still I, I just think that I'm not a typical overreactor and um, I don't want to change that you're still mindful of the shortened season um, and this is something where I, I think the value of our ball club is that 
you know, just talking about the lineup, everywhere in our lineup is of value. Um, and I think that the openness for our guys to essentially hit anywhere in the order to allow for people around them to potentially get better matchups or to be in better situations to drive a run in or get on base. Um, I think I'm very fortunate that we have guys like that. And, um, you know, I'm very mindful of putting guys in a position to have success. So uh, Muncie's hit in the middle of the order, Jock's hit at the top of the order, JT we've moved around, Cody we've moved around. So um, just to have their uh, support um, it has been good. And, and obviously the, you know, the winds have showed that, but individually, JP, I expect them all to kind of get out of their individual, you know, funks at, at a certain time. Right now, it's hard to have everyone swinging the bats hot at the same time. Yeah, not necessarily with Max specifically, but just generally, have you found yourself having more conversations with players to explain things? Because a player could come back to you and say, you know, it's been a tough 50 at bats, but it's still early. Meanwhile, you know, you're managing like it's game 35. Any tension there at all? No, no, not at all. I, I think that, you know, regardless of a regular season or, or this season, I have conversation with these guys every day. And I think, you know, it's important for them to realize what I'm thinking, the coaching staff, the organization. Um, so, yeah, there's certainly no tension. And we're all here to win baseball games. And, you know, each particular night um, is its own game. And, and that's our only focus. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys.